everyone, welcome back to the Sussex Handmade Soap Company. I'm Anne and today we're going to be creating another scenery soap. We're going to be using all natural colourants and the sculpted layer technique and we'll be creating another British coastal scene. We're going to have a little bit of fun with today's video in that we're not actually going to tell you what scene we are creating. We want you guys to take a look uh, and see if you can guess what we have created. Hopefully it won't be too hard if you are vaguely familiar with the British coast. Um, because I think we've done an okay job with the soap because we've already made it and I think I can tell what it's meant to be. So hopefully you guys will be able to tell that too. Um, it's quite a long video today, so I'm gonna keep this intro brief. Um, and with that in mind, let's just get on to making the soap, shall we? So today we've already added our lye water to our melted oils and we have already brought it to a very light trace just past emulsion because we need a long working time for today's design. For the first layer, I have got a very small amount of batter, about 100 grams in here, and this is going to be coloured a light sort of greeny colour. And this is nettle powder, French yellow clay and French green clay, mixed in with a little bit of our liquid oil. And we're going to tip these into here and then use our stick blender to bring it to a very thick trace so we can create our first layer in the soap. So the first layer is a very slim one, um, hardly worth putting it in really, but for the authenticity of the design, it has to be there. So the batter has been brought to a nice thick trace now. We're gonna get this into the mold. This layer of green is only gonna be down the left-hand side as you look at the finished soap bar. So I'm gonna pour the majority of it, obviously, down the left-hand side of the mold. And I'm going to use the spatula to just press it down into the corners so that hopefully we can minimise any air bubbles that may form from where we have, haven't completely filled the mould. Just pressing it down carefully into every corner. Now we're just going to wait for this to firm up a little and then we're going to use our first scraper to create that first layer. So we're now going to take our first scraper, this mark is the top of the mould, show me how far down I need to go. And I am going to go down to that line and then drag the scraper through, removing the excess batter. So as you can see, nearly all of that batter has actually been removed, but like I say, this was a very small, very thin layer. So that is literally all we need. And that excess batter, we are going to pop into another mold to uh, make some more soap, because we don't want it to go to waste. So our next layer is going to be a sand colored layer because there is sand in this design. So for that, we are using one teaspoon of French yellow clay, just mixed into the batter. Um, and I meant to say as well that we've actually scented this batter today. We've used lavender essential oil, um, about 50 grams for the whole soap. Um, so it should give it a lovely, lovely smell. As before, we're going to use a stick blender to bring this to a really thick trace and then we're going to get it in the mould on top of that first layer. So we're back to the mould now. That layer of green is just there. I know you can't see it on the camera, but I promise you it's there. And here is the sand. And like the green layer, the majority of the sand in this design is concentrated on this side of the mold. So I'm gonna be putting more of it on this side here. Just pouring it all in slowly and carefully. I'm gonna stop halfway through and just smooth out what I've already got. Just using the spatula to just sort of gently bounce it down into place. So let's move on to scraper number two. Same drill down to that line and then 
pulling it all the way across, removing the batter. And I've got to say, I've really been enjoying doing these scenery soaps that we've been doing the last few weeks. They are incredibly challenging, working out sort of the designs and the stencils and the templates, but they are so much fun and it's so satisfying unmoulding them and seeing that design coming to life. And with that in mind, I've been thinking about doing some more, but I need to know what scenes should I do? So if you guys know of any kind of really lovely kind of beauty spots and iconic kind of landscapes, do drop us a comment and let us know. Um, there's just a couple of requirements and that is they can't really have buildings or people in them because I just don't have the skills to do those kind of things in soap at the moment. So we are talking purely like landscapes and scenery. Um, and the less red in them, the better because natural colorants, I cannot find a way of getting a nice kind of bright red post box red, which is a shame because for Christmas, I wanted to do a soap with snow and a nice kind of snow covered post box but the post boxes here in this country are bright red, so that's not going to happen. I suppose I could always do a post box from the Channel Islands. I think they're blue, but that's not really as iconic as a uh, bright red post box with the robin and all of that. So yeah, drop us some comments. Let us know of any really kind of breathtaking designs or, um, or scenery, sorry, locations that you know of. And if they're <laughs> easy enough, then we may well take your ideas and turn them into soap. So now we've got about 700 grams of batter in this jug, so that is quite a lot. It's going to be used for layer three, but we're also going to hold some back and use it for layer five as well. So that is why we have got so much. And this one is going to be coloured in a lovely blue colour with about a quarter of a teaspoon of indigo dye, a quarter of a teaspoon of indigo powder, and about half a teaspoon of white kaolin clay. So in case you haven't guessed, this is going to be C. So, you know, I'm giving you kind of hints towards our design. It's gonna be kind of obvious, I would hope, that it is a seascape that we are doing today. But the question I want you guys to answer is, where in the world am I? Um, this is a place, I'm going to give you a clue, it's not actually in Sussex. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's not a Sussex location. It's a location that I've been to on holiday with my family years and years ago, and it is a beautiful, beautiful place. So, take a little guess and let us know where you think this design is. Just going to incorporate it a little bit with the spatula first. And then I'm going to bring it to a trace with a stick blender, but I'm not going to go quite as thick until I split this down into two, because like I say, we need to reserve part of this for layer five. So we don't want our layer five portion to be too thick yet. So we will get to a kind of medium trace just to ensure that all that indigo is blended in nicely. And then we'll separate it down into two portions and bring the first portion to a nice thick trace. So now I've split it down and brought the first portion to a fairly thick trace there. And unlike the grass and the sand, this C is actually predominantly focused on the right hand side of the soap bar. So we're going to do the opposite to what we have done and try and keep the majority of it over on the right. Again, starting by pouring just a little in, then I'm going to use the spatula to ease it into the corners. So, scraper number three now, and this is where things start to get a little bit trickier. The design becomes a little more involved. We've got shapes and things that we need to form now. And that, oops, makes it all that little bit harder. Just roughly taking out the majority of the excess to begin with, and then we're going to go down with the scraper and just really sculpt out that design. I 
There we go, pretty happy with how it's shaping up so far. You can see the beginnings of uh, something, any guesses yet? I'm just gonna clean up the edges of this mold and we'll move on to our next layer. So as if this design wasn't tricky enough already, for our next layer, we are actually using a combination of different colors which we're gonna try and swirl together. The reason is we are creating cliffs. And though they may look gray at first, there is a lot of different colors in them. If I just did it gray, it'd look too two-dimensional. So here we have got some Dead Sea clay and some Rasool clay mixed in with our liquid oils. And we're gonna put this into the larger amount of batter. There's about 250 grams of batter here. So this is going to be our predominant cliff colour. And then for our second colour, we have got some spirulina powder and some French green clay, just to give it a greenish tint, because this particular cliff does have distinct notes of green that I want to try and capture. And there is about 125 grams of batter in there, by the way. And our last one is some activated charcoal because again this cliff does have darker patches and I think the activated charcoal is hopefully going to give a representation of that. So that is going into our smallest amount of batter because we don't want too much black or it will be overpowering. There is about 75 grams of batter in this little one here. Just going to mix them in a little with the, stick, um, with the spatula then I'm going to move on to the stick blender and this one I'm going to bring to a thick trace and the other two I'm going to bring to a slightly thinner trace and then I'm going to swirl all three together to hopefully create the perfect cliff colour. So now what I'm going to do is, that's our first layer, nice and thick. Pour a little of the green in. I'm going to put most of the green in because I am aware that this particular cliff has different areas that look greener than others. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but let's pour a little bit of black in too and just say swirl it in there a little. We don't want it to blend completely, we want there to be variants. So then we go back to some more green, get that in on the top, a little bit more black, and just sort of swirl it a little bit with the spatula. And then back to finish off with the rest of the green in there. And lastly, the remainder of the black. And mix in to create that kind of stony, cliffy effect. And I don't know about you, but I reckon that is cliffs in a jug. <laughs> And now we're back to working on the left hand side of the mould again because this blue sea here doesn't have cliff. It is cliffless. So I'm going to start at this end just carefully spooning or spatulaing in the cliffs. And then again using the spatula to go down into the edges. And I can't help but say, this design being somewhere that I used to go as a child on holiday and my constant mentioning of Cliff has um, most definitely put summer holiday in my brain. And as I am spatulaing this out, my little brain head is singing summer holiday round and round. Does the Cliff have any shadows? Oh, now that's good. Does the cliff have shadows? Oh, I, I, I missed that one. That's good. I like that. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> now, the next scraper, and this is the layer that I am most scared about because I did a little tester of this soap over the weekend. I don't generally do testers of the soaps before I make them. I tend to just jump feet first straight in and go for it. Uh, but this one I had a bit of spare time and I didn't want to uh, film that particular day, so I didn't. I just purely made the soap for my own fun. But it was this layer that it all started to go a little bit wrong because I did not have enough batter to do my cliffs. So they didn't work out how I wanted them to. And that's why today I've upped the batter quantity, obviously. And I'm hoping that they work better this time because other than running out of batter the rest of the design the other day worked out pretty nicely. 
I was happy with it, but it just needed some tweaking, which I've done. And I'm now bringing you the revised, hopefully, much better working version. Okay, the cliffs are now in. I have noticed there is a couple of little holy bits in them which are likely going to turn into pockets of air. Um, I could try and smooth them out but it's going to take a lot of effort and I'm not sure if I'm going to end up messing up the top of the design so I'm going to leave them in. So if we do end up ever selling this bar and getting it assessed and whatnot and you happen to receive a soap from us with a tiny little pocket of air, um, it's just the cliff. It's meant to be like that. Cliff You're the winner! <laughs> You're the winner! Yeah, congratulations! <laughs> cliffs sometimes have holes. These cliffs do. They're old. So now we're back to the reserved batter from layer 3, which we are now going to be using in layer 5. It has obviously thickened up quite a lot. I am going to stick blend it just briefly, just because there are a few little specks of indigo dye, and I find just giving a stick blend helps them to dissolve or blend in a little bit better, but I'm not going to do it for long because it's already pretty thick. And unlike all the other layers that have been concentrated more on the left or the right, this goes everywhere. Um, just up and over the top of the cliffs, not right the way up the mould because we have got one final layer to go. In fact, I'm actually just going to just gently scoop it out with a spatula and just place it where I want it to be because I am worried about those cliffs being flattened if I just dump it all in the mould in one go. So here's where I can start to breathe that sigh of relief. Just one more scraper to go and it's an easy one. It is just a pure straight line. So uh, nothing nearly as complicated as the ones we've already done today. Oh, if I could find my spatula that is. So there we go, we are done with the scrapers now. We just need to clean up the mould and then do our last layer, which is just going to be the sky on the top of the scene. And for our sky, we want a really nice light blue. We want to imagine that it's a nice, clear, sunny day. So I have got about an eighth of a teaspoon of indigo dye and half a teaspoon of kaolin clay, again mixed in with our liquid oil, which we're going to add into this batter now and hope that once we stick blend and mix in, we get that beautiful blue sky tone. So here is our beautiful blue for our sky. I don't know how well the camera is picking that up, um, but it is a really nice light pale blue. So we are now going to do our final, final layer, just pouring it all over. And we've got that nice contrast already I can see between the sky and the sea, which is what I was going for. And we're just going to fill it up to the top. As always, working it into the edges with that spatula. It's a lot easier though, because this isn't a, such a thick trace, because we didn't need it to be, because we have done all our layering. We are done with scraping, done with layering. All we're doing now is putting the final touches on. So there we have it. One completed soap. And I kind of feel like I should cut the video there, put it up, and then ask you guys to guess and see if any of you can actually come up with an idea of what fairly famous, I would say. In fact, yeah, it is. It's famous. What famous UK coastal scene I have created in the soap. Um, but to be honest, that would involve then doing another video separately and it's much easier to just slice the uh, turning out and cutting 
all together. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cut now to us showing you the finished bar. So the waiting is over, the soap has been cut, and this is what we have created. And I'm really happy with this design and how it's worked out. I think the colours that we've used in the cliff have worked really well. The swirling of the three, four colours that we used has really kind of helped it to jump into life a little bit. Um, I think if we just used solid grey, it would have looked a little bit more 2D. But yeah, mixing the colours together has really given it that 3D effect. And each bar is different. So this one we've got a kind of a grey a bit at the top and then it's a bit darker down below. But if I take a bar from, say, here... You can see it's a little bit more even, the colours are a little bit more swirled, uh, perhaps a few more grey bits down here at the bottom. But on the whole, incredibly happy with how it's turned out. It does kind of fit the image I had in my head and also the image that I had on paper that I went from. So we're calling this one a success. So there's only one thing left for me to say to you guys now and that is to ask you, where in the world is this soap? If you do think you know the iconic British beauty spot that has inspired us to do this design, then do let us know. Drop us a comment in the comments box and give us your best guess. If you're a little bit shy or unsure, don't worry about it. Remember, if you're wrong, it's more a reflection on me than a reflection on you. Couple of clues. The first is that although we are the Sussex Handmade Soap Company, this location is not in Sussex, so you need to look a little further afield. Second clue is that it's somewhere I went on holiday as a child. But unless you knew me as a child, that clue's not going to help much. Um, other than that, there's not a lot left for me to say. Hopefully, this soap will be getting assessed, which means that, fingers crossed, it should be available to purchase on our website, which is here. And you can use our discount code as well, which is here. From mid to late October 2020. Fingers crossed if all goes well with the assessment. Um, if you have got any ideas of designs you'd like to see us creating, maybe a favourite beauty spot or just a location that you like or somewhere that you think is really pretty, let us know because I am looking for more ideas for scenery soaps. Other than that, if you do enjoy our videos, give us a like, give us a subscribe, you know, tell your friends about us, that kind of jazz. And we shall see you for some more soapy fun next week. Bye! Thank you.